Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the post-2020 uh, webinar, the ninth of its kind, and the first for 2020, which promises to be a very busy and exciting year uh, leading up to COP15 in China. Like I mentioned, this is the first uh, webinar for 2020. Um, we had a very busy and productive and successful 2019, um, everything related to nature and biodiversity in cities. And we're very much looking forward to, to what 2020 has to offer. Um, and like I said, uh, leading up to COP15 in China. Next slide, please, Pedro. So the main aim of today's webinar is just to take stock, um, look at some key highlights from 2020, from 2019, and yeah, looking at the plans for 2020, um, mainly around local and sub-national government networks. Um, and we have an interesting panel lined up today. Um, next slide, please, Pedro. It shouldn't be too long a webinar. Um, but thank you for making the time for joining us. Uh, just to remind you guys that it, the webinar is being recorded and the presentations, all presentations uh, that will be made today together with the link to this recording will be made available to you. So we're going to have four presentations uh, after which we'll have an opportunity for discussions and questions uh, the last session of the webinar. So you guys will be welcome to make comments, um, ask any questions of clarity, um, whatever the case might be. So we'll get to that stage later today. So just to introduce myself, I'm Ryan Fisher. I'm a professional officer at ICLE Africa. Um, our panelists include uh, Kobe Brandt, who's our regional director and the global director for ICLE Cities Biodiversity Center. We'll also be joined uh, through recordings by Renata Gomez, uh, representing Regions 4, and Mr. Teru uh, Kisuna from, yeah, Mr. Teru, uh, Teru Kisunu, sorry, from Goals, will be joined us for this morning session, uh, but we recorded his presentation, so we'll play that, that recording um, in his time slot a little bit later, and then Robbie, uh, from the Committee of the Regions European, who will be joining us shortly. Uh, Robbie is actually scheduled to present second, but he hasn't joined us yet. So as and when he does, we will move the presentations around accordingly. Uh, next slide, please. So just uh, the short agenda for today, um, as I mentioned, we'll have uh, the four presentations from the speakers who I just introduced, and then towards the end, we'll have some time for questions and discussions. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Kobe Brandt for our first presentation. Thank you, thank you very much, Ryan, and um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, I think, as Ryan will also mention once again, we'll share the link with you, these um, uh, monthly webinars um, will carry on it started last year and will carry on right through up until COP15, the big moment for nature and biodiversity that will be held in Kunming, China in October. And they'll probably intensify as we need to share more information closer to Kunming. So um, they will be available on our YouTube channel as well as our uh, local um, and regional um, government website, um, the roadmap website to COP. Uh, 15. Um, so I'm going to really just talk a little bit about progress to date and looking ahead for what we can expect um, in future years. So maybe you can move to the next slide for me, please, um, Pedro. Um, yes, so uh, a huge development that I'd like to share here with you is that um, at the end of last year, when the global task force of local and regional governments a general assembly met, uh, it was agreed that ICLE would play the, a focal point. There was interest in the nature and biodiversity space from the global task force members, and ICLE um, uh, will from now on uh, act as a focal point to the global task force 
informing all these members, um, these are city and regions networks you're looking at here, uh, in, terms of uh, in terms of biodiversity and nature-based solutions and all things nature. And um, um, also make sure that the, na the necessary links to uh, the Global Task Force, other agendas such as climate and culture, etc., that those are made well um, and that biodiversity and nature is mainstreamed also into the work of the Global Task Force. So um, we invite all members of the Global Task Force to join our webinars from now on. Um, you're more than welcome. Many of you have actually been already actively supporting and engaging in the advocacy process um, that we've been uh, leading since last year, specifically the Committee of Regions and Regions 4 and um, other organizations um, that we work with closely. But we welcome all new members of the task force to this um, outreach and this advocacy roadmap that we'll be in, that we'll carrying on. So if we move to the next slide, um, you will see this is a timeline that doesn't highlight everything. It's a very, very busy advocacy and outreach and mobilization year for us, and we're in the midst of it. But this um, timeline just highlights some of the key meetings um, that um, our constituency will be presenting um, our voice and our interests uh, to the global community as um, these meetings are all instrumental in formulating the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework, uh, which will be adopted in Kunming in China in, 20, uh, in, in April uh, 2020. So um, already in 2019, I want to just highlight two big events. Um, the one uh, took place um, in Montreal in November, Substar 23, which is the technical meeting of the CBD, of the Convention on Biological Diversity. And um, what was significant there was um, that we had a first engagement under the auspices of our global ambassador for local biodiversity, Maya Valerie Plant from um, Montreal, um, who hosted with the CBD Secretariat and ICLE and Regions 4, hosted a, a, an engagement with the parties of the convention, in other words, the nation states. Um, and it was very well attended, a very active meeting took place where each of us shared our ambitions in terms of what we'd like to see um, for in terms of decisions um, and mainstreaming the city and region's agenda into the new global biodiversity framework. So there already there was broad consensus in the room that um, we need to actually have a consolidated new plan of action type decision. Uh, we know that in Nagoya in 2010, the parties agreed for the first time ever in any UN convention, I might add, um, uh, that there should be a dedicated decision on cities and regions. And this took um, shape in the plan of action, um, decision 1011, 1022, sorry. Um, and um, that was a, uh, that, decision was running from 2011 to 2020. So it's coming to an end now in 2020. And But that, that plan of action decision sparked a number of initiatives and activities by national governments, uh, regional governments, local governments, networks like ourselves, um, other actors, and it really um, gave us a, a, an institutional home uh, collectively under the CBD for our collective work in cities and regions on biodiversity and nature. So we need to replace it with something stronger, more ambitious, bolder, because we believe that the um, uh, contribution that cities and regions can and should be making um, in a post-2020 world needs to be upscaled and outscaled dramatically. So we're calling for a much stronger decision to replace the plan of action and then also we're calling for um, mainstreaming cities and regions throughout um, um, the key as decision um, aspects related to the local and subnational level 
in the GBF um, um, that uh, uh, Montreal was a very significant meeting, and then of course the COP uh, 25, the climate COP in Spain, um, in Madrid. Uh, we've seen there for the first time at an unprecedented rate that the nature and climate uh, discussions are com coming together and converging very nicely, that we're talking about nature and climate um in 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 the same at the same sort of level and um uh, both of being solution solution oriented and understanding the symbiosis between the two uh crises that we are facing at the moment and there is a greater awareness unprecedented awareness now that one cannot address climate change or nature in isolation from one another and we really saw that uh, coming through very strongly in all our deliberations um, at the COP uh, in Madrid. And this for us was uh, something that we really want to build on in the year ahead. And it's also coming out in many of the papers that are being released by other stakeholder groups. So for our constituency, um, we understand that a city and a region is a perfect nexus where this type of convergence and this type of nexus approach is so possible and so doable and necessary. Um, so we're looking for systemic type of solutions that address both nature and climate at the same time. Um, I'm not going to go into details. You can have a look at these. I just want to point out that some of our colleagues um, are actually in Sao Paulo right now, and there will be a declaration released, um, I believe, today, coming out of that meeting um, that summarizes the very important deliberations that held that was that were held there, high-level deliberations. Um, for um, so not only South America, but it was a globally, um, CBD globally endorsed um, event that took place there. And in our next webinar, we will get direct feedback from our colleagues that are there right now. Um, and uh, in next week, <coughs> we will be participating at the World Urban Forum. I'm hoping to meet many of you there. And please look out for our nature sessions during the World Urban Forum. Um, and that's just ahead of the open-ended working group two, which is taking place in Rome later this month, where again, we're hoping for a strong contingency of subnational and local governments to come and join us there when we are, um, where we will be in direct engagement as a constituency with the parties who are starting the formal negotiations during this open-ended working group. So hope to see you in Rome or Abu Dhabi or definitely um, elsewhere during the course of the year. But if we don't meet in person, please, this is your space. This is our space where we as a constituency can talk about and um, also share latest updates and information. I'm going to end just by saying that we, on behalf of ICLI, um, and with inputs from Regions 4 and the Committee of Regions and um, goals. We have made inputs into the first zero draft um, that, that was released by the two co-chairs of the COP. Um, this document was released in early January and uh, comment period closed at the end of January, 31st January. So our comment went in and we're very happy to share that. It will also be posted on our roadmap website. So please have a look at the website if you want to see what we have presented back to the co-chairs. There are some great um, ambitious statements in that document, but at the same time we feel that reference to local and subnational governments need to be much stronger and also widespread throughout the document. We are, and again, um, definitely we pointed out to the call for a new strong decision, dedicated decision on cities and regions. I'm going to um, end there, if we can just go to the next slide. Um, and um, please, Bruno, if we can just move along to the next slide. This is something I'm not going to go into detail, but um, just remember that um, the post-2020 framework is going to focus on the vision of, um, for 2050, and all activities will fall under that. And as a last point from my side, just to make you aware of these upcoming dates for these um, webinars, please join us at any one or all of them. 
um, and let us know if you want to present from your city or your region or your institution. Um, um, this is a platform where all of us can share uh, what we are doing and also share and raise our ambition together for um, taking our active role in the post-2020 world. So with that, thank you very much and back over to you, Ryan. Thank you very much, Kobe. Very insightful and as you guys can hear, 2020 plans and promises to be a very exciting and busy year for all of us. So we're very much looking forward to to that and your continued partic participation in these webinars um, going forward. So we'll see on screen now, our next webinar um, is scheduled for later in March and obviously we'll share more relevant information closer to the time. So please do watch the space. Um, we're now going to go to our second presentation um, and it's going to be uh, Roberto Ronaldi on behalf of uh, Robbie uh, for the presentation from the Committee of the Regions European. So Roberto, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Fantastic. I will just then connect my screen and start with the presentation straight away. My name is Roberto Rinaldi and I'm the policy officer at the Committee of the Regions. I'm working uh, specifically on biodiversity and climate change. And what I want to uh, show you today very briefly is the work of the COR with respect to the uh, to biodiversity. And I will just spend a few words on the Committee of the Regions, what is it and how it works, just for you to understand who we are, if you're not familiar with it. And then to, I would like to provide some explanation about the contribution of the Committee of the Regions within the European Union context. So talking a little bit about the European Union biodiversity strategy. And then uh, just uh, um, a quick overview on the activities that the Committee of the Regions does outside the European Union. So the involvement of our institution with the preparatory process of the post-2020 policy framework. So let's go a little bit to, into the details. So the Committee of the Regions is basically um, the European Union Assembly of Regional and Local Representatives. It has been created in 1994. And it has, um, its mission has been to represent and promote the interests of uh, local and regional authorities in relation to the European decision-making process and this is because in the European Union, 70%, 7-0, of all EU legislation is actually implemented by local and regional authorities. So this is why it is important to have an official voice of regions and cities within the policymaking process. And it is really important uh, for our members. We have 350 members who are local and regionally elected politicians from all over the EU countries. Here on the screen, you can see the figure of the Committee of the Regions up to uh, last year. Now, after the Brexit and after the end of the mandate, we will have a, a new distribution among the different political groups. Mm, however, what's interesting to know is that the, the Committee of the Regions adopts uh, of official documents. They are called opinions. And these opinions are documents that we um, we then um, send to the other European Union institutions for their consideration and the European Commission uh, has to formally reply to the, to the points that uh, we raise in, with regards to the different topics. And these different topics that we work on are divided, uh, distributed among the six commissions and the topic of biodiversity is uh, um, under the Commission for Environment, Climate Change and Energy. In 2018, the Committee of the Regions already adopted an opinion on uh, biodiversity towards uh, its participation to COP14. And this year we are doing the same towards the COP15. We are working on an opinion that um, deals with the European strategy, but also with the COP15. And what we are specifically uh, working on this year is shown here on the screen. These are the main topics that we are now discussing. Um, first of all, we, uh, we want to put forward recommendations on how subnational governments can be involved 
in the implementation, the monitoring, evaluation and feedback of the post-2020 biodiversity policy framework. This should include formulating recommendations on the formal recognition of local and regional authorities alongside other parties in the United Nations, but also in the European Union uh, documents. We also want to discuss how to tackle the drivers of biodiversity loss uh, as identified in the IPBS report of uh, last year and also on the um, report by the European Environmental Agency called the European Environment State and Outlook 2020. It's a very interesting uh, publication on the knowledge for the transition to a sustainable Europe that, and it has a specific chapter on biodiversity that we will consider for our opinion. Then we also would like to um, collect and share the knowledge on existing funding and financial tools for biodiversity action by local and regional authorities. And we want to understand also what are the expectations of uh, these authorities for their future development. And we are doing this uh, at the European level, but of course the, the structured and also the main fundings could then be applied in a broader uh, scope in a, to other countries. And then we also wish to discuss the available solutions. And we mainly refer to nature-based solutions, but also we will reflect on um, actually what it means to have a biodiversity management at sub-national level. And uh, here we will focus also on the aspect of how and local and regional authorities could, could contribute to the national action, either formally or informally. Um, we want also to um, propose how subnational governments should communicate the new biodiversity policy and policies, and this is not only at European level, but it's also at um, global level. And then we have um, a reflection on how the new biodiversity framework might interact with other existing agendas. Uh, and I'm not referring only to the UN agenda, such as the Paris Agreement, such as the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, but I'm also talking about, uh, for example, in Europe, the European Green Deal. And finally, the last focus, the last points to that will be included in the CR opinion would be how to mobilize the citizens in other actors um, locally and how to build alliances locally and across the different levels as well as between local and regional authorities and this relates to the building up or strengthening uh, alliances among the different actors because uh, very often in the case of biodiversity we have seen the need for uh, specific expertise or for specific needs that very often one single authority could not by itself uh, bear the cost or find but if there is um, the possibility to actually share the, um, the that expertise among uh, a group or an alliance of local authorities then in that case we would not only would have um, a, a cost saving but it would, would also increase uh, the effectiveness of, of the action. So these are the messages that will be included in the COR opinion for the EU biodiversity strategy, but also relates to the, um, the post-2020 policy framework at the global level. And what we're going to do, we're not only working on the content, but we're also working on disseminating the content. And uh, this goes through not only the, by the advisory committee for subnational governments to the UNCBD, uh, the committee of the regions is part of this advisory committee, but we also try to disseminate our key messages through a list of events that happen within Europe, but also globally. Some of the, of the ones that you can see now on the screens on this table have already been mentioned. Um, previously, but here there are also some uh, additional European uh, events for, for your knowledge and uh, I look forward to any contribution or any feedback either for co-organizing a session on one of these events or more generally um, in content-wise 
for the COR opinion. And uh, do not hesitate to contact me or Robbie Beaver by the email address that you can see now on, on the screen. Um, I thank you for your attention and I give back the floor to Ryan. Thank you so much, Ronaldi. Uh, very good presentation, very insightful. Uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how your ambition spans out for this year. And of course, we we value the partnership and looking forward to work, continue working with the with, uh, Committee of the Regions going forward. Um, so thank you very much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the next two presentations are pre-recordings um, from Renata and the next will be from Teru. So just bear with us. Um, if there might be some glitches in sound, um, etc., just a reminder that these recordings together with the presentations made will be made available to you uh, after the, the webinar. So um, with that, I'm going to ask uh, Pedro to please place the pre-recording for Renata. Hello everyone, I'm Renata Gomez. I'm with uh, Regions 4, uh, an organization that represents subnational governments uh, worldwide. We are also together with the government of Quebec, the coordinators of the advisory committee on subnational governments and biodiversity, which is a official um, body that represents subnational governments um, at the heart of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, today I will be talking about the actions the advisory committee is, is taking towards the post-2020 process and in particular uh, on the road to, to COP15. All right, so uh, firstly, I would like to, to mention the very important upcoming opportunities uh, for subnational governments to participate and to, to share their, their views and uh, experiences and expectations on the post-2020 process. Uh, the very first one is a consultation uh, session that is organized by the Committee of the Regions, the European Committee of the Regions. Uh, called Biodiverse Cities and Regions Beyond 2020 at the UN CBD COP15 and in the next EU strategy. It's uh, taking place um, uh, the 30th of January and, uh, in, and its, uh, its main objective is to gather uh, well experiences from, from regions in Europe to inform the EU, the next uh, biodiversity strategy of the European Union, but also to um, provide insights on what the European Union can possibly contribute to the post-2020 process, and in particular, well, to hear the, the voice from stakeholders such as World Regions 4, the Advisory Committee, these uh, World Global Initiatives that represent national governments. Uh, also, the, the next big opportunity in which the advisory committee is going to be present is the Bio 2020 Brazilian Perspectives on the Post 2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. It's an event organized by the government of Sao Paulo State, uh, together, of course, with ICLE and uh, the city of Sao Paulo and many other partners that are well gathering, well, as the, as the name says, well, the perspectives of Brazilian regions and local governments on the post-2020 process, again, to inform the CBD uh, about their, their very particular and special circumstances. Um, also, of course, as you, as you probably are well aware, the second meeting of the open-ended working group meeting that is taking place sometime in February, um, it's also a great opportunity in which the advisory committee is going to be present 
uh, its coordinators, the government of, of Quebec, is going to, to be participating and again sharing uh, the views of the advisory committee. Uh, in this occasion, in an aligned manner with our other uh, with other constituencies that also represent uh, well local governments, ICLE included, also the the group of leading subnational governments to the IH biodiversity targets goals. It's also going to to be there, so it's going to be a very good opportunity for subnationals and locals to get together and jointly send a message to to the CD. And the other event I wanted to highlight is a, a thematic workshop organized by the government of Scotland called a Workshop for Subnational, Regional and Local Governments on the role in the CBD post-2020 uh, framework. It's happening in, at the beginning of April. It's again uh, going to be a great opportunity uh, to inform uh, the, the CBD, the post-2020 process in particular, what's coming after uh, the second meeting of the open-ended working group as it is um, straight after the meeting. Okay, so what the advisory committee is contributing in particular, well, I, I wanted to highlight what our vision is uh, when it comes to the Global Biodiversity Outlook, its fifth edition, as you may know, uh, the draft was shared with, with the stakeholders and all the parties for, for to receive comments. And, and the advisory committee did so. Uh, we shared some, uh, well, our perspectives on, on what the draft contained and what we, basic, what we basically suggested the CBD is, number one, to make um, explicit and further reference to the importance of subnational governments as key in articulating national policies and programs because we feel that the current draft is not reflecting uh, that, that relevance, that importance when it comes to, to implementation. Uh, again, we recommend uh, the, the GBO5 to take a comprehensive approach, particularly in the scenarios it proposes, and we suggest to, to highlight or to propose a bigger focus on the importance of urban rural linkages and of course the various levels of government involved in, in urban rural uh, linkages processes and approaches. We also suggested to consider subnational biodiversity strategies and action plans as well as though uh, as the national programs and, and, and actions and the progress subnational governments have achieved towards the IT biodiversity targets as reported by to the CBD by the, the, the group of leading subnational governments at SBI2, in which they share a, a, a very important report on, on, on the progress uh, goals members have, have made towards the ABTs. When it comes to the zero draft of the Global Biodiversity Framework, also the advisory committee has uh, gathered a, a common voice around that and has uh, shared some very specific recommendations to the CBD, among which are, well, we uh, recommend, again, a specific, a specificity on the means of the participation of some national governments within the post-2020 global a framework and particularly its 20 action targets because it's not uh, it's not clear and it's not specific how subnational governments can contribute although it's recognized um, it's not it's not uh, further explained on, on on the how also uh, we recommend the inclusion of subnational of the subnational level of government throughout the text including in the, the, the sections of the purpose, the theory of change, of course, the action targets, as I mentioned before, impl the implementation support mechanisms, enable the enabling conditions, and, and many more. I mean, subnational governments and, and local authorities are a fundamental part of, of the whole implementation process and should be considered uh, throughout the text, is, is what we we, we, we feel. Uh, we also are suggesting 
that they frame or consider the role of national governments in the implementation of nature-based solutions and mainstreaming biodiversity, as well as the link between the 20 global targets, the national commitments, and of course, the implementation on the ground. When it comes to mainstreaming, we, I, I, want, I wanted to, to recall that the uh, Regions for together with the advisory committee, members produced a report, particularly on mainstreaming biodiversity. Uh, you can see it uh, on, on your screens. Is, uh, it gathers the, the experience of all the members of the advisory committee on the practice of mainstreaming biodiversity. It's very interesting and, and we, we trust it actually informs the CBD by we're going to be submitting this, this document as an information document at the subsidiary body of implementation meeting that is taking place in May this year, later this year. So, um, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be good for us to 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 be part of of, of that. Uh, to continue with what we are uh, commenting on the zero draft, uh, we also recommended uh, something and if you have attended the previous webinars, I have been sharing updates. This, uh, this is a very crucial request that we have been making the CBD and its parties throughout The post 2020 process, as well as uh, ICLE shares this this view with with the advisory committee, and it's basically we re we are recommending on a new decision that renews the plan of action on some national government, cities, and other local authorities for biodiversity that ends in 2020. Uh, we believe this is a major uh, instrument. Uh, to uh, express how the implementation process of the new frame, framework can can be done and it's a great opportunity to to that we have to renew these new decisions so so this is another request we are including and uh finally we are suggesting that as well as national priorities uh the framework should consider the very complex and diverse priorities that take place at the local and subnational level of governments as, as also uh, very important when it comes to, to the final outcome and the final objective that we are all pursuing, which is uh, stopping biodiversity loss and, and of course achieving the new, the renew uh, action targets for biodiversity at a global scale. So, so basically, this is what we are going to be inputting to, to the CBD in, in those uh, milestone events that I, I share at the very beginning. I want to thank you for, for your attention. And I would like to remind you that you can find out more information uh, on what we do on biodiversity uh, at the website that you are seeing on your screens, regions4.org. Uh, my name is Renata Gomez. and. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, team and everyone on EK team for, for having me. So thank you for also to Renata in her absence. Uh, very insightful presentation. Um, very interesting um, perspectives there on the zero draft. So um, and we like to see the emphasis on local and subnational government. So well done to the Regions 4 team. Mm -hmm. Our last presentation for the day, Mr. Teru uh, Kisuna of Goals. And this is also a pre-recording from this morning session. So again, just bear with us um, for issues, technical issues surrounding sound, etc. So over to Teru. Thank you very much for giving me uh, <coughs> such an opportunity to present the initiative of IG and goals for 2020. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, before uh, moving to the plan of goals, I'd like to <coughs> show some of our recent uh, achievements 
in IG. IG biodiversity strategy was adopted after COP10, uh, which adopted the IG biodiversity target with the 2050 vision living in harmony with nature and 2020 mission as the actions to hold the biodiversity laws. And in the IG biodiversity strategy 2020, our strategy, we uh, advocate uh, the IG method, uh, <coughs> which is uh, formed by ecosystem network councils and also IG mitigation systems. And we have uh, developed some tools to support uh, this IG method. And in <coughs> ecosystem network counties, we have a lot of social entities like universities and the business sector, uh, local government, and also uh, NPOs. Uh, the total number of the entity is uh, about 250. And as 2020 is a special year for us at the at the uh, the end of the uh, our strategy and also at biodiversity target. Uh, this year we're making effort to wrap up the achievement and also uh, raise public awareness. So the first of our attempt was held in. 11 and 12 January uh, at IG Nagoya Biodiversity Expo. Uh, it was a kickoff event of uh, the national wide UNDB wrapping up relay. So as you know, the <coughs> we hosted the Asian Pacific uh, consultation, regional consultation, uh, just a year ago. And it was the, the kickoff of the regional consultation workshop uh, just after COP14. Co so uh, Aichi Nagoya is always the uh, place of beginning. And this event was co-organized with uh, the Ministry of Japan, uh, Ministry of Environment, Japan, the Nagoya City, and also Japan Committee for UNDP. And, and our governor, Omura, gave his uh, comment at the beginning of the event. And this was a very complex uh, event. And, uh, we held a previous campaign, the post contest in Instagram. Uh, we have uh, more than 1,000 uh, works from Instagram and emails. And these uh, photos are the best photos uh, chosen by the, uh, the photographers. Uh, all uh, pictures showed the beautiful scene of Aichi. So we'd like to utilize these uh, pictures later uh, afterward. And in plenary uh, sympathy, we had a keynote uh, speech from uh, Sakana-kun. Sakana-kun is a very uh, popular scientist and who can uh, showcase the wonder of nature very, very uh, nicely and very popular for, especially for children. And afterward, we had a panel discussion by people working for biodiversity in our prefecture and also young idols in our prefectures. <clears throat> And we had also uh, scientific or thematic uh, 
semantic, uh, semantic sessions. Uh, four sessions we had. Uh, session one is the scientific evidence. And this, uh, you can see uh, one example of a report by a researcher about the freshwater turtles. And in this uh, map of uh, peninsula, uh, Chita Peninsula, <coughs> the researcher uh, investigate the, uh, the proportion of the uh, turtles. Uh, and red sign is the uh, invasive alien species. And yellow is the yellow and green is the endemic uh, turtles. And we can see that during uh, these uh, 15 years, the proportion of the uh, turtles uh, uh, dramatically changed, especially in the south part, the most remote part from the city of Nagoya. Uh, so this uh, such uh, result show us we should be uh, we should do after uh, world. So invasive uh, species is getting more problems in our prefecture. And also uh, in the session three, uh, we was uh, on the grace of biodiversity. This photo is uh, from a um, organic farmer uh, <clears throat> who is standing in the center of the group. Uh, he like, what uh, he have been uh, working on organic uh, agriculture, and when he increased the uh, the land, uh, he uh, he asked a, a handicapped people to. Uh, to work with him. So oh, then he could increase his farmland, but also the uh, hangar people get uh, healed uh, themselves. It was a very amazing uh, effect, effect uh, of the nature, I think. So oh, this also oh, show us uh, the people uh, we should collaborate with uh, in the future, I think. And we had more uh, boosted mission or uh, even the food corner, uh, <coughs> which provided uh, fried alien fish or also honey uh, produced by, <coughs> sorry, in an urban uh, high school, uh, the high school student uh, even sold the ice cream themselves, right? And this event have a long tail mechanism with itself. We have produced a specific logo for 2020 uh, for common use in IG. You can see a single leaf the uh, logo mark uh, behind uh, the scene of COP10. And now, 10 years after COP10, so we uh, put nine more leaves and also fruits. And it, this uh, means the achievement uh, for 10 years. Well, and also, we collect. We are going to collect uh, best practices and good practices in IG, and we are planning to bring it to COP15 in the booklet. All right. And also, we <coughs> are now working on new strategy for us as the current strategy is uh, get to the end this year, we need new strategy. So uh, about the new strategy, we uh, consider a lot about the new 
uh, post 2020 global biodiversity framework, and also, or of course, the EPBS report or DBO5 also, and also we uh, considering the SDGs like uh, grace or biodiversity. But also, of course, we need to stand, stand on the achievements so far and also science and evidence-based. And to apply the principle on the ground for us, we are thinking of upgrading the Aichi method for mainstreaming and also define the value of nature with scientific method and the communication with people. Uh, the picture on the right hand is a scene of workshop uh, with uh, the residents to find the treasure of nature in their areas. Also, uh, next slide. Yes, this is a map of Aichi, uh, full of the important point in uh, the nature. And next, this is a map of uh, protected areas. So uh, we can find some areas without protection and that will show us that we need to uh, make some mechanism, create some mechanism to uh, protect uh, a good site or a good uh, ecosystem, uh, but not uh, protected right now. So we also uh, need to enhance partnership and breakthrough sectionalism, encourage municipalities, also enhance uh, SEPA and capacity building, also developing, uh, develop compensation uh, mitigation method, and also take advantage of the progress of science and technology. So that, uh, so we have just, uh, began to work with new strategy, but uh, I expect we can bring uh, the outline of the our new uh, strategy to COP15. All right, let's go to the goals uh, plan for 2020. Now, uh, goals is uh, trying to compile a report on Subnational experience on vertical integration, in line with the guideline uh, which ICLEI and the SCBD published in 2017, and, and you can see the the guidelines uh, at the uh, URL in in the bottom, and we are planning to post it to uh, SBI3, which we uh, recognize a very, very important uh, conference for uh, COP15. <clears throat> uh, our report will showcase concrete initiatives of each member along the uh, 13 guidelines which the, the, you know, the Iglesias book showed to us. And also, uh, we are planning to have a side event of goals uh, on this report along SBI 3 in uh, next May. And the second point is uh, the goals is uh, operational partner of the advisory committee of subnational government. So we will support the advisory committee and also collaborate with ICLE or other subnational entities like uh, ECHO uh, to help a new plan uh, for local and subnational government should be adopted in COP15 to the open-ended working group to 
in this February in Rome, IG is attending too. And, ex and uh, expecting to have opportunity to participate, to discuss <coughs> what new global biodiversity framework. And also we are expecting to have meeting with other relevant organizations such as Equal Regions and ECO. And we expect this is a very fruitful and strategically important uh, meetings for us. The fourth point, uh, very, very unfortunately, we cannot attend to the Scotland consultation on April because uh, the April is uh, uh, just the beginning uh, day of the fiscal year in Japan, so everything could change. So we cannot be there, but uh, we recognize this consultation uh, is so important for all of us that we'd like to search for a possible method to contribute to the conference as goals uh, somehow. And along COP15 in October in China, uh, Governor Omura is planning to attend as far as he can save the date. And also, IG is planning to have a side event and exhibition uh, of goals, if possible. And also, we are thinking to uh, bring some youth, young people uh, who are active on the ground. So uh, I hope we can uh, show the achievement and importance of subnational government in COP15 also. And we, I forgot to uh, show in this slide, but I'd like to uh, share a very uh, happy news for uh, goals uh, that the Jiangsu province of China has just entered to goals, so we have a friend in China uh, in within goals right now. Okay, thank you very much. Here we go. A big thank you to Teru as well in his absence. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a busy 2020 for goals as well. Um, and we're also delighted to hear that the. The China, the region China is actually growing. So well done to the goals team. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it seems that we are just out of time. Um, just a big thank you again to our panelists for availing themselves to, to join us today and present. Um, yeah, we're looking very much forward to a very productive 2020. Just a reminder that these webinars happen once a month. So please be on the lookout um, for those dates and, and more information around them. And please do share them with your colleagues and your peers uh, far and wide so that we can um, yeah, ensure that we reach all relevant parties globally. And yeah, the next one is scheduled for the week of the 26th of March. So uh, just watch the space for more details on that. And I think with that, colleagues, we can call this webinar to a close. Again, thank you very much for your participation. Just a reminder again that the presentations will be made available. So if you want to reach out to any of the speakers, please feel free to do so. And a recording or link of the recording of this webinar will be uploaded to our Italy YouTube channel as well. So you can um, find more information there. And then, as always, keep a lookout for our post-2020 roadmap and um, also our Cities with Nature uh, platform. So please do reach out to us on the information on the screen right now. So if you have any further information or you would like to get in touch, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to us. So with that, thank you very much. Um,
and everybody keep well so that the webinar comes to a close. Thank you. Thank you.